Hey everybody and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host and security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting November 5th, 2012. Well, this was yet another week of more security news than I can share with you in one episode. So let me start by quickly, quickly summarizing the software updates you need to be concerned about. I'm not going to talk about them in detail. Rather, I'm just going to tell you what software has been updated. So if you have it, go get the updates. First of all, during the week, Apple released a new version of QuickTime to fix some security vulnerabilities. If you use QuickTime for, for Mac or Windows, be sure to get that update. On top of that, Cisco released a few updates. One important one was one for their ACS or access control system. If you use Cisco ACS, be sure to update it. There was also some important Adobe related news. First of all, they released an important Flash Player update. If you use Flash Player, the latest version fixes seven vulnerabilities, many of which allow code execution. So be sure to upgrade Flash Player or turn on its automatic update so it will do the update for you. More importantly, during the week, a Russian security organization released news about a zero-day vulnerability in Reader X, the Adobe PDF Reader. Basically, they found attackers in the wild already exploiting this zero-day vulnerability in the PDF Reader. This vulnerability affects the latest and greatest version of Reader X, and it's even rumored to escape the Reader X uh, sandbox, so it's a very, very critical vulnerability. At the time of this recording, this vulnerability has no patch. Adobe hasn't even really publicly reacted to the vulnerability. Right now, your primary recourse is to ad avoid PDF files. But I would pay attention to Adobe Reader updates in the future. I'm sure Adobe's going to react to this very quickly. Finally, Microsoft released their advanced notification for patch day next Tuesday. According to this post, they plan on releasing six bulletins, which will fix over 19 vulnerabilities. Four of the bulletins are rated critical, so they're pretty serious. And the updates are going to affect Windows, Microsoft Office, Internet Explorer, and the .NET framework. On top of that, some of the Windows updates do affect Windows 8 and even the new version of Windows 8 RT, which is on the Surface tablet. So if you're an early adopter of that tablet, you'll definitely want to pay attention next Tuesday during Microsoft Patch Day. I haven't talked about Anonymous over the past few episodes, but they were out in force this week. November 5th is Anonymous's Fox Day. Fox is the name of the, the guy whose mask they wear all the time in those images. Anyways, during Fox Day, Anonymous makes a point of trying to do as many breaches or hacks or, or hacktivist-related uh, things as possible. This November 5th was no different. They did threaten that they had take down Zynga and Facebook as they have before, but that did not not happened. However, they were able to do some security breaches. Uh, they gained access to Semantics Network. Uh, they apparently breached Hyundai. Uh, they also affected the U.S. Department of Energy. And early in the day, they also claimed to have gained access to some PayPal accounts. However, PayPal has denied this, and there's no real evidence of the PayPal breach. Finally, some anonymous related groups had already breached VMware or one of their partners uh, months and months ago and threatened to release the VMware source code. And on Monday, they finally did release that VMware source code to the world. Granted, this is actually very old source code from apparently a 2004 VMware kernel. Nonetheless, it's a pretty significant source code disclosure. So that happened. Another Fox Day came and went. Uh, I would classify most of these breaches as no big deal. They're, they're not as bad as some of the breaches we've had in the past. Nonetheless, it does continue to show hacktivists still continue to try to breach our network. So you should do everything possible to protect your environment. Moving on, one of the biggest stories this week was an undisclosed breach of Coca-Cola's network back in 2009. According to a Bloomberg article, some suspected Chinese hackers were able to breach Coca-Cola's network. Essentially, it was done using the same type of techniques 
as were used in the Operation Aurora attacks that affected Google and many other uh, big companies during that same time period. One of the high-level executives at Coca-Cola received a very targeted spear phishing email and he interacted with documents in that email and thus got malware on his computer. Over a month of time, uh, the Chinese or the suspected Chinese hackers were able to gain access to many other servers in that network and steal hundreds of documents from Coca-Cola. During that time, Coca-Cola was apparently doing an acquisition of a Chinese juice company, so some say it might be related to that. In any case, Coca-Cola did not disclose any of this information to investors or to the public. It's just coming out now. It does show that there are still many big cyber espionage breaches. Whether these really come from nation states, there are definitely criminal forces out there trying to gain access to our intellectual property. So another reason we should aggressively defend our networks and perhaps even implement some sort of data leakage prevention technology like those found in WatchGuard's XCS appliances. Next, let's move on to some interesting malware from the week. This one comes from Trend Micro. According to one of their posts, they found a new Trojan they called the PicSteel Trojan. What's interesting about this Trojan is when it infects a victim, it starts searching your hard drives, the C, D, and E drive, looking for very specific files, in particular JPEG image files. So it tries to gather up a ton of the image files it finds on a victim computer, and once it's found 20,000 or so of these image files, it connects to an FTP server and uploads them to the attacker. On top of that, in another interesting note, it also looks for .dmp files, or dump files. These are the, the technical files that programs create when they have a crash or a core dump. And if you're a security researcher, you know that these dump files can, can provide interesting clues towards why programs crash, which lead to vulnerabilities in those applications. So I suspect they're, they're looking for vulnerabilities on their victim computers. In any case, many people are wondering why this malware specifically looks for image files. This could have many uh, reasons. For instance, maybe they're looking for intellectual property that might be in image files. But more realistically, they're probably looking for embarrassing embarrassing files. Uh, it turns out many of us have some embarrassing pictures on our files which these attackers may be able to use to extort us. They might say that uh, if we don't give them money they'll post these embarrassing files publicly or whatever. In any case it's an interesting new malware technique to specifically seek out image files on our computer and steal them. So I'd keep an eye out for more malware like this in the future. Oh and by the way the best protection against this is just having up to date a AV. Most AV products, including the ones found in our products, are able to catch the PicSteel Trojan today. So if you use AV and you're up to date, you really don't have to worry too much about this particular Trojan. In more mysterious rumor-related news, during Thursday of this week, Twitter had a credential breach scare. On Thursday, a number of Twitter users received emails from Twitter telling them they should change their password due to a potential password breach. On top of that, Twitter unintentionally forcefully reset a number of users' passwords. As it turns out, this, this forceful reset of passwords was purely a Twitter mistake, which they apologized for. However, it still seems like there was some sort of minor password breach that did cause Twitter to warn a number of their users. Now, I don't think this is a very widespread uh, password or credential leak problem. So if you're a Twitter user, you probably don't have to worry about this unless you specifically received an email from them. Nonetheless, if you prefer being safe rather than sorry, it probably is a good time to go and change your Twitter password. Let me finish with a quick update to one of last week's stories. If you remember, I talked about a Borderlands 2 issue called the Graveyard Virus. This was a, a situation where if a modder changed his save game file in a way that allowed him to access a secret mode in Borderlands 2, he would actually create a situation where his save game file could potentially be deleted. Worse yet, if he played online with other players, they would inherit that same save file and they could lose their save games as well. Well, last week this flaw had not been fixed, so if you played on Xbox 360, you had to be very careful. However, this week, uh, the creators of Borderlands 2 have patched their game, so it's now safe to go ahead and play Borderlands 2 on Xbox 360 without worrying about losing your save file. 
Well, that's it for this week. If you use the affected products, be sure to go out and apply those Adobe Flash and Apple QuickTime patches as soon as you can. By the way, one quick show note. I'm actually going on vacation the next few weeks. This means WatchGuard Security Week in Review is going to take a two-week hiatus, so don't expect to have any episodes over the next two weeks, although I might post a short video next Wednesday right before my vacation. Anyways, in the meantime, if you'd like more regular security news, I recommend you always follow our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com. And don't forget you can follow WatchGuard and me on Twitter, WatchGuard is at the at WatchGuard tech alias, and I'm at SecAdept. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.